My beloved children, you belong to me. But do you truly understand the depth of this connection? You may acknowledge it, but perhaps you haven't fully grasped its significance. I am your God, who walked the earth 2,000 years ago. Yet, I am present with you in your current time through the Holy Eucharist. I am constantly by your side, day and night. I invite you to come and commune with me. Especially during this Lenten season, a time dedicated to drawing closer to your Creator. Come to me, yes, come. Know that I am ever-present, never ceasing in my companionship with you. You can turn to me at any moment, and I will be there. I am always available to listen, to converse with you. If you attune your heart to me, you will hear my voice within your soul. It's a simple act to listen to God, yet so few take the time to do so. I may not speak loudly, but I imprint upon your soul all the guidance and answers you seek. Do you love me? Speak it out to me. Do you seek my guidance? If you recognize the path you must take, give thanks to me. Understand that I dwell within you, alongside you, and all you need to do is act in accordance with my will. If you truly believed in my love for you, you would eagerly serve me, serve your fellow beings, come to my presence in my churches and offer prayers to me. With unwavering devotion and trust, however, it often happens that in churches, visitors outnumber the faithful. These visitors are frequently not attired appropriately. And I ask you, my dear friends, my faithful ones, are you different? Consider my example as well as that of my mother Mary, the Blessed Virgin, and strive to emulate our modesty in attire. You may argue that times change and customs evolve, but decency transcends eras, and in heaven, it remains eternal. Let your clothing reflect the purity of your soul modest, chaste, dignified, and suitable for the occasion. Let us reflect on the appropriate attire for worship, both for men and women. It is advised that men refrain from wearing any headgear, whether it be a hat, a baseball cap, a safari cap, or any other form of head covering when entering a church. As for women, it was once customary prior to 1962 and the Vatican to reforms for them to wear chapel veils during Mass, while this requirement is no longer mandated by the Church. Women are encouraged to prayerfully consider continuing this beautiful tradition. The clothing we choose to wear reflects the state of our souls. Nonchalant attire suggests a lack of reverence, while lewd attire indicates a disregard for modesty. Improper attire reflects a lack of respect for oneself and others. Our bodies serve as a reflection of our souls. A faithful soul will exhibit consistency and modesty in its dress. A holy soul will display discretion. And a soul lacking in shame will demonstrate modesty in its attire. It's important to recognize that our outward appearance can affect our inner disposition by dressing modestly and appropriately. We not only honor ourselves, but also create an environment conducive to spiritual growth and reverence. Let us be mindful of how we present ourselves, ensuring that our attire reflects the dignity and respect owed to the sacred spaces we enter and the souls we encounter. I urge you to distance yourself from those who embrace wickedness and to resist the temptation to look back, consider the state of affairs in your homeland. Are you residing in Europe or elsewhere? It's essential to recognize that not all nations are identical some hold sway over others. Take, for instance, the country of Champagne, which stands on the brink of embedding the crime of terminating unborn lives into its constitution. Shockingly, nearly all of its representatives have endorsed this measure. What has become of this nation? Can it still be considered responsible when it sanctions the destruction of innocent lives before birth? How can the citizens of this country continue to lend it any credibility. This nation appears to be in a state of moral decay, headed towards its demise, by depleting its essential resources and endorsing such egregious actions. It seals its fate for downfall. Did I not caution the inhabitants of Israel to flee 
and to pray that their escape would not occur in winter or on the Sabbath, Matthew 24, 15 to 2. It's imperative to heed this warning and consider the consequences of remaining in a society that disregards the sanctity of life. In the same vein, I solemnly declare to you, separate yourselves from the wicked and do not glance back in their direction. Refrain from forming alliances with them and avert your gaze from their ways. They are aligned with the devil, whereas you belong to God. Let your prayers ascend unceasingly to the heavens. For the day of reckoning is imminent. Heaven will not allow humanity to remain ensnared in sin. For it is written, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me Matthew 25 minutes and 40 seconds. Reflect upon the era of chaos. When the people laid hands on the Son of God, crucifying him, heaven's retribution was swift and unyielding. They were scattered across the earth, deprived of a homeland. Even today, those who act in defiance continue their rampage, perpetuating violence and intimidation against those who oppose them. They have usurped authority and engaged in acts of cruelty demonstrating no remorse for their actions, yet be steadfast in your faith. For God's justice will prevail in due time, my beloved children, who find yourselves dwelling amidst these perpetrators of evil, indeed, for those who mercilessly end the lives of innocent children before they draw their first breath, are nothing short of ruthless bandits. I implore you, do not extend them your trust, nor should you draw near to them, Keep yourselves apart, my sons and daughters, and refrain from associating with them. Remain steadfast in your faith, devout in your devotion and fervent in your prayers. Stay close to me, and you shall harbor no fear. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I bestow upon you my blessing. Know that God's love for you is boundless, and my love for you knows no bounds. May you find solace and strength in your unwavering connection to your Divine Master, who guides and protects you always, O Lord Almighty and Merciful. We humbly bow before you, seeking your boundless grace and wisdom to discern your will. Grant us the courage to follow your path steadfastly, blessing us with strength to overcome adversity and compassion to uplift those in need. May our hearts be filled with love and kindness, reflecting your divine light to all we encounter. Guide us on the path of righteousness, shielding us from temptation and evil, and forgiving our shortcomings as we seek redemption. With gratitude and humility, we offer our prayers, trusting in your divine guidance and blessings to accompany us always as we journey through life. Hand in hand with you. Amen.